Hello, this is Slevik and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the changes in the upcoming patch, the Emperor patch. In the latest dev diary you could see some changes for the Horyman Empire and to be specific mechanics inside that. What I'm going to show you is first of all the new reforms and right now we're not having just the standard reforms for everyone, we have three types of them. After that I will talk a little bit about the Imperial Incidents of course there's not much about them in the dev diary and we don't know much, but I'll tell whatever I know. And then I'll talk a little bit about the new mechanics with those reforms and of course some rebalance changes. Let's do that! So as the Imperor you have at the beginning only the common reforms. There are several of them and you can see that basically the first five of them are quite similar to the old ones and they are giving general bonuses both for the Emperor and the members of the Empire. After unlocking the fifth common reform, you can start choosing either the centralization or the centralization reforms, depending on your strategy, how are you playing, with whom you are playing because you are maybe playing multiplayer. So right now you have way more flavor and you can decide which way Empire will go, if it will be united until one Emperor or maybe there will be a lot of bonuses to all of the members and everyone will be equal. Before we go to the decentralized reforms, you can see that the sixth reform over here is giving a mercenary cost from the HRE mercenaries, which might be quite interesting considering the changes to the mercenaries in the next patch. As you can see, the decentralized part is having five different reforms and they are very focused on making the empire stronger, so can increase the amount of the free cities, increase the amount of the electors, you're strengthening bonuses from the emperor like the manpower bonuses, you're doing the same for the electors. Yes, also electors are getting a couple of bonuses, you're having also a bigger movement speed for the HRE members, development cost or even more manpower if you are fighting enemies of the empire. What is really interesting here is that you can call all I mean all of HRE members, it's like revoke privilege for one war, it costs you just 25 Imperial Authority and considering all of those bonuses to the Imperial Authority growth, it should be quite easy to get that and really funny tool to use. Of course it's not as strong as revoke privilege, but for the multiplayer I think it should be an amazing tool. The centralized part is basically the copy of the old reforms, so I'm not going to go deep inside this because it's just a copy of the old reforms. Over here you're just uniting your empire and in one strong emperor. To give even more flavor to HRE, Paradox decided to add imperial incidents. What is that? So 13, because we're going to have 13 of them at the beginning, are historical events that influenced HRE a lot. There will be a Dutch revolt, German peasants war, question of the Swiss or of course Burgaden inheritance. So how does it work? Each incident will be having two options to choose how to react for the event. Every elector, every prince and of course emperor will have a chance to vote on that. How every AI will vote will depend on a lot of things, for example for the Burgundian inheritance, a yeah, princess bordering Burgundy would probably not like Burgundy to join the Empire. So except the different bonuses and minuses from these incidents, Emperor might get also Emperor authority or lose it. So for example if most of the princes and electors chose the same thing as Emperor, Emperor is going to get his Imperial Authority and positive relations with them. It will be 0 0.2 Imperial Authority per Prince and 1 per Elector. But if Princes and Electors choose differently, he will lose significant amount of the Imperial Authority and it will worsen his relations with this part of the Empire. So finally there are a few small changes and additions. First of them is that when you are an Emperor you can revoke the last reform but it is going to cost to 50 per authority, so it's really costful. But maybe you want to change from the centralized to the decentralized way because you cannot get both reforms. Another change which is, it seems, it sounds weird, is uh, how you are going to add provinces to the empire. So right now you can only click one button which is adding all of the provinces and you don't get any imperial authority for that. What Grookey said in the dev diary is that we are going to get 10 empire authority for every new prince joining the empire, which 
I'm not sure because first he said that it's for adding provinces, then he said on the bottom line that it's above the princess, so I'm not sure how it would work, but yeah, we will see. Another thing is a few boosts to the Imperial Authority growth, because of course we have more princes right now, and what is more important, more free cities, 12 free cities, which is going to grow Imperial Authority way faster. And as we have tons of princes in the HRE right now, the cost of fabricating claims is 50% bigger, so it will slow down expansion inside the empire a lot. And we'll see how to affect multiplayer, because so far HRE was extremely slow in expanding the countries in the HRE, like in comparison to the countries outside it, and right now it will be even slower. I'm really interested how to work, maybe the other bonuses to the Empire will be better, but yes, it, it doesn't look good for the multiplayer in my opinion. But you know, on the other hand, also AI will be expanding slower and it means it will be more princess for a longer time, and it means of course more Imperial authority and potentially more bonuses to the Emperor, so if you want to be Emperor, it might not be that bad. The next thing that is updated is Imperial Ban Casus Belli. So, so far if a prince had a positive relations with you, you couldn't attack him on this Casus Belli. Right now it's deleted, we can basically do Imperial Ban on everyone in the Empire. And finally, the thing that is, I think there's the most talk about it in many places, is forced into HRE Casus Belli. At least depending on what is on the Dev Diary, you can by war force every country in Europe into HRE. But you know, it's not set over here, but I'm pretty sure there will be something uh, limited to development on what kind of country you can invite. And uh, I'm not sure how they'll work that out on multiplayer because it will be easily exploited to just add everyone to the Empire because you just declare war, another player just accept that and that's all. Okay, so that's all for the HRE mechanics changes and you will probably have to update it when the patch comes, but don't worry, I'm planning to do so. So if you like this format and you would like to see more of such videos, please leave a like on it, comment what kind of overview you would like to see and of course leave a subscription so thank you so much for watching and see ya